that's what I do when I, you guys aren't around. I think we're in the age of the remix. There's no such thing as originality anymore. Now it's just about how you use the information around you to generate your individuality. Social media, technology, the internet, the way that our bodies exist virtually, it's a paradigm shift with the multiplicity of the body. My body is multiplied several times in my videos, not because I'm narcissistic, but it's because I consider the videos to be similar to an essay. I feel like my body is a form of punctuation. They act as commas, exclamation points, question marks. Virtual space for me is a queer arena for my body to perform in. Voguing is all about performing realness. I feel like there is a perfect parallel between my practice and the ball scene. When I perform in the green screen, is usually freestyle, but based on objects that I see. Voguing is all about performing objects around you that aren't there. The movement is so lyrical and it's about drawing and accenting space. Dancing and movement is the closest thing to drawing that I could figure out. When I was growing up, the way that I started drawing was me trying to assist my mother in becoming a rich woman on the Home Shopping Network. Well, I say all the time, aging should be aspirational. If you My mother was watching Suzanne Somers healthy, telling right? Americans they can be Aging an entrepreneur and make a million dollars. And so she started to make drawings. Regular utilitarian objects. She was sending them off to companies trying to get them invented. Find one of my favorites in this batch. She's made way more drawings than this, but this is a couple thousand. I started to realize that it wasn't what I thought it was, and she became more troubled, and um, she started to evolve into having a mental illness. The drawings became more of a necessary meditation, keeping the chaos out of her head, keeping her mind contained and focused. The Matriarch's Rhapsody is based on my mother's drawings. The blurring of the authorship is super important for me. I work with her drawings because I want to make my work from a pure place that comes from necessity and comes from obsession and comes from the essential, bare bones, necessary place that art should come from. Stuff that I grew up dealing with. It's like J.R. Tolkien's or C.S. Lewis books, Final Fantasy 1 through 10, and all the video games I played. There was always a strategy guide, a legend. I wanted to create my own codex of 250 of my mother's drawings to contain that mythology that I am trying to manifest through art. I really want to make the most personal thing in my life my work. When I was a kid, I got diagnosed with cancer, and I had to go through chemo for two years, and I lost my movement in my arm. So my body got disrupted. Reifying Desire 3, I picked medical drawings that fix or heal the body or enhance the performance of the body. And I gave myself two minutes to write a stream of conscious essay of how these drawings would blend with each other narratively. Kind of like Exquisite Corpse, where you take different elements and make it into a uniform idea. Everyone has a system that they have to stay faithful to. It reveals things in my unconscious. It gives me a creative restraint to create a nonsensical storyline. This unlimited sci-fi surrealist paradise. Another system is performing outdoors in public. that I'm performing as doesn't understand limits. 
It's about me taking the avatar of the video, putting him in the world. How do I take that mundane and urban environment and make it fantastical in my animation? I just took a trash bag outside and turned it into a creature that has, you know, <laughs> trash bag breath. When I go out, it's like a sketchbook. I don't know what's gonna happen. But I know that when I get back with the footage, it's going to inspire something that happens in my animation. Learning 3D animation really, really started because I was obsessed with family footage. In the video, I noticed I'm like constantly obsessed with hanging out with girls and my cousins, and they're kind of excluding me and pushing me out. No, Jacoby, you can't. That's what the girls do. And I felt like this desperation to be loved and to belong is something I still, I think I still deal with today. So it's kind of like, how do I re-perform all those bodies from my past? It's like a reconstruction. In my country ball world, that's where I really explore the possibility of queerness. So I said, okay, so I'm gonna find 20 of my mother's drawings that deal with recreational American material culture. I'm gonna find all of her drawings of grills, slides, sinks, carousels, TV, cakes, lots of cakes. I'm removing her intentions of the drawings and combining them with my intentions. It's interesting that her drawings were trying to subscribe to the most normal thing you can be. And when they enter my universes, they become something else. They become queer. It's queering the purpose of the object. A cake becomes a skyscraper. Women into hermaphrodites. Torture, gestation, transformation, world building, there are recurrent themes that I love to explore subconsciously in the work. I know that my personal narrative is almost like a fantasy novel because it's so loaded with these weird esoteric things. But at the same time, the narrative I'm most interested in is what happens when drawing, performance, and animation intersect. I want to figure out how can I take the character from my videos, put it into the real world, and figure out how do I turn them all into participants in the video. And I feel like by me actually participating in that space while they're watching those videos, it takes it from one dimension to the next. It's like one of those things that I continue to ask myself. How am I extending the frame? I am what you call an extended frame video installation performance diva.